Pastor Dwayne. Pastor Dwayne. Yes, sir. How art thou? Uh, doing great, doing great. How about yourself? Amazing. God, dig it, dog. I'm doing amazing and getting better every day. Why am I looking at the screen? I got one right here in front. And getting better every day. Uh, thanks for asking. Man, we got to stop playing with this kingdom stuff we live in and go ahead and dominate kingdom, king's dominion. He is the king of kings. Let's, let's listen to Dr. Uh, Price, my pastor, for a moment in priceless moments, and then we'll come right back. Your faith will never rise above the level of your confession. Repeat after me. My faith will never rise above the level of my confession. My faith will never rise above the level of my confession. So we control where our faith functions or operates by virtue of our confession. If we confess doubt, unbelief, and fear, that's where your faith can operate. You have a lot of faith to lose. You have a lot of faith to keep poor. On the other hand, turn it around. Start saying what God says, and you will be absolutely amazing. You will be absolutely amazed. My faith will never rise above my confession. What are you saying? Um, did you so happen to, uh, well, yeah, I'm sure you did. I don't even know why I phrased it that way. <coughs> How about this morning, uh, Pastor Dwayne? Oh, yeah, y'all, uh, I mean, that went a whole different direction. That was good, though. It was good. And it's amazing how many people, and, 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 and you know something, you could have forced the, your lesson and then missed out on what the Spirit of the living God was leading you to minister to certain people for. I can't hear me. Yeah, no, I didn't say a thing. Uh, uh, I saw your mouth. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. I uh, actually, uh, Elder Donald, did you see this morning? You said what now? You said portions of it you 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 staff people I, I i i need every last one of you all watching it even while you're dressing for 10 or even while you're in the car it, it'll do you all a world of good to listen in because les what i say here i don't even say there what I say there, sometimes I don't even say there. But I use the same scriptural reference. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. Did you see that part? No, I didn't see that, I didn't see that part. And then you come in here with the same scriptural reference? You can't make this stuff up. Let me highlight, listen to me. Don't you dare act like you bored like one second of what I'm saying to you. Okay, you can be bored if all of your natural needs are met. Go ahead and be bored. But if all your natural needs are not met, then, then pay close attention. Did you hear what I just said? 
uh, Pastor Wayne, you, you, you want to help me out with this? Or you just, okay, lift your hand or, or just jump in wherever you can fit in. He's probably never paid, played uh, a double dutch. Uh, what do you think? Nia. I'll get ready to call him Maya again. Nia, you, you think Pastor Wayne ever? No? Pastor Wayne, you ever play double dutch? Jump rope? Nah, because I, I never put myself in a position to jump in. See, because cause in double dutch, see, I, w I, just, I would just be standing. And so you can't, you, you, gotta, you gotta rock like this and get yourself in a certain position if you're going to double oh, that. Don't help him out. I, I never put Let, Hey, Mike, get your wife, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you got to rock. If you don't rock, you don't just, you don't just jump in like this. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 you got to be real good if you just jump in like this. But most of them urban chicks, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> no, with that, with that double mint gum. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, sir. You, you, know, you know, there's some people that come in here for the word, and they rocking like that. You, you can tell they're ready. But then, then there's some that just come in here, you know, just like this. And they ain't ready. That's, that's why they ain't catching some of this stuff. And then they're going back home trying to duplicate some stuff that you ain't even really picked up. Come on. I, I, I feel there's some people in here. I feel there's some people in here. Yeah. <laughs> look, look at him. And you can tell. Uh-uh, 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 Miss Peter. Uh -uh. Come on, don't do that to me. I can see me, fellas. I can see me. Use the middle screen or something. But make sure I'm always tied into them. Because I just missed the moment of that. What happened? What, what was that? Uh, Miss Beetle, no, Miss Beetle got uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> she, Somebody got it by their seat? Y'all saw yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you see, that's see how it. the cameras got to work. Y'all got to work with me, man. Because I shouldn't miss a moment up there. And you can tell the difference between those who are and who aren't. It's going to come out. That 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, if you look at that verse number 6, Superfluous. Superfluous, go back to that. Superfluous. Did I say that right, Cornell? Superfluous. Go back to superfluous. In verse 1, superfluous. Uh, that's a word I learned this morning, superfluous. You see that? It is superfluous. What is that? Huh? What? Put that flu in there. Superfluous. It's not super perfect. No, no. Look it up. If you look in the pronunciation, it's P H O O. Fluous. Fluous. Superfluous? It is. It's H U or S U H. Look at the pronunciation. Okay. Let me, let me tell you something. Fluous. Fluous. Superfluous. 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 Look at the pronunciation. It's, it's S U H. Look at the pronunciation. I'm going with the dictionary. Just take a look at it. I'm not going with you. You know what I'm talking about? I went over this too much this morning. I ain't wasting time with any more of you all. It means unnecessary. You pronounce it however you want to pronounce it. Because is it via or via? 
I rest my case. Let's go on. It's unnecessary. It is unnecessary for me to write to you concerning, for I know your willingness about which I boast of you to the Macedonians that what? What's that word? Yeah, okay. Was ready a year ago and your zeal has stirred up the majority. Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that as I said, you may be ready. Lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you what? Find you what? find you not in this position. We, not to mention you, should be ashamed of this confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it was to exalt the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gifts beforehand which you had previously promised. That it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as grudging obligation. Jump that. Verse number seven. So let each one give as he or she purposes in he or she's heart. Now, look up for a moment. Look at me, look at me. Most people for eons, even myself, have used this scriptural reference as a giving scripture. And I'm not suggesting that it's not a giving scripture. It's far more than a giving scripture. It's a living scripture. Selah. Selah or Selah. There go Tim. And, and my daughter got my back. Don't y'all fool with, with our relationship. She got my back. She, she, she ain't doing anything to ever hurt her father. I got some daughters who have set themselves against me. That ain't one of them. And I will listen to her. But I worked so long on the way I was pronouncing it, she ain't going to change the way I was pronouncing it. I don't care what she said at that point, that moment. Your heart is the birthplace to all of your increase. Oh, my God. If, oh, my goodness. No, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. You better get in on this one. Because if you can get this one, Joshua, listen to me, son. If you can get, Jose, listen to me, son. If you can get this one, life for you is a wrap. That donation you need will come from God. And it doesn't require another participant. He'll give you a kidney while you sleep. Y'all, 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 y'all stop playing with me. You stop playing with me. You stop playing with me. Because I come in here to pour out kingdom nuggets to you. And you sit here like you deal with a mere man. And some of y'all 
You, you're not going to get your stuff until you receive me right. Not, not, not the God, dog. No. Please hear me as humble as I know how. God, dog, no, I'm not trying to exalt myself or put myself on the pedestal. This is God's order. It's his way of doing things. And you got to you got to follow instructions. I came in here during the week, Aaron, and I told them the way I wanted this section to be set up. And I come in here and nothing has changed. Dr. Price told me, if you can't follow the instructions of a person you can see, how are you ever going to follow the instructions of someone you can't see? And, I, and now I, I'm, plain, I'm plain as I can be, and I'm, I'm saying, you got it? Yeah, I got it. You sure? Yes, sir. I'll show it to you. I'll come by there if, you, if need be. No, I got it. Get on me, man. What are you doing? <laughs> he over here. Yeah. He, that's our relationship. No way. I come in this morning. He picking lint on. <laughs> Ain't nothing like a man who wants to serve you like he does. Amen. It's, 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 it's priceless. So, so, so people who get offended, but I mean, get, get on me. He, he knows exactly. Like I call Didi, man, come on, man. And people look at me like, Shh, don't be talking to her. She ain't no man. First of all, <laughs> that's my wife. That's what, that's, that's what Pastor Fred, Pastor Fred, didn't Pastor Fred come here and tell me, I don't like the way he talked to Dr. Didi. You just be, You work on your relationship with your wife in Jesus' name. Amen. Shelly, is that you I'm looking at? Yes, sir. Okay. Shelly? There is no reason in this world for you as someone who's been with me all of these years not to have every last one of your needs met. I'm not saying you don't have them met. I'm saying let's evaluate what we're doing here, class. Let each of us purpose in our heart that that's the key to living. And maybe somehow I'm missharing this with you. But the reason why people are not having victory in their lives because they never purposed it in their hearts. You, you never purposed it in your heart. I want victory. You never purposed it. You never purposed in your heart to have victory. The reason why some people relationships are failing because they never purpose in their heart for it. I just want a good relationship. But in order to have a good relationship, you got to purpose that thing in your heart. Amen. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. The reason why the sickness is there, you never really purpose in your heart to be healed. You just say, God, heal me. Well, the healing doesn't come from outwards. The healing comes from... Let each one of us... The reason why you still fornicate is because you never purpose in your heart to stop. I'm going on the other side. 
The reason why you stay in homosexuality and lesbianism is because you never purpose in your heart to get out. Fornication, adultery, et cetera, et cetera, whatever it is. You never, you never purpose, think about, I never purpose in my heart to get out. The reason why you still don't tithe, you ain't purposed it in your heart. When you don't make what you want in life important to the place it gets in your heart, you'll never have it. I live the way I live because I've purposed that life in my heart. Long before I had it, I had it. Now, watch this. Here's where most people blow it. You think you got to get it to have it. Then you can say, I have it when you get it. No, you got to have it, then you get it. Get it? Do you get it? Say, I must. I must. So watch this. Dr. Price just told us, and I didn't know they was going to play that. You'll never live above the level of your confession. Now, the whole mm, process of the kingdom of God works on confessing something with your mouth and believing it where? In your heart. In your heart. So, if I get it in my heart, I got to get it out of my mouth. If I get it in my heart, I got to get it out of my mouth because confession brings on, oh my God, the confirmation of possession. Because it takes something to say what you have when no one around you can see it. Did you hear what I just said? You think I ought to let Pastor Wayne in here for a moment? Okay. What I have been doing for eons, I have been purposing it in my heart, and I've stopped pursuing success and became success in my heart. The minute you become success, you can stop running after it because success mm, will come to you. Amen. I'm preaching better than what you. I was, I was sharing, and you need to go back this morning because I can't duplicate. I was sharing this morning and one man in the rear began to weep. I didn't know if he was laughing or if he was crying. <laughs> and it sounded like a chuckle at first, but then I was hearing like, oh my God, what have I been doing all this time? You've been sitting around and never purposed this kingdom in your life, never purposed it in your heart. See, you can't give Grudgingly, you can't give sparingly or you can't give bountifully without first purposing the thing in your heart. The way I was able to give Dr. Betty Price $90,000 just a few months ago is simply because I purposed it in my heart. I told you months before I gave it to her. Now, now, get your doggone mind off money. Because I am not, okay, calm down, Mike. I am not talking about money. I'm talking about living. I'm talking about life. The reason why you keep arguing with your spouse is because you never purposed it in your heart to stop it. And that's why you run off the mouth all the time and y'all been going back and forth for eons about, oh, I'm coming on the other side. Oh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I'm right where you live. The reason why you keep doing what you're doing that you don't even like yourself that is not consistent with the kingdom is because you've never purposed it in your heart.
Your silence is blessing me. No, 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 no. No, I don't need your amens because I know I'm all in your doggone red cup Kool-Aid. And I can't stand red cups. I'm too king to my, don't you ever hand me a red cup. Donnie's trying to give me a red cup. Where Donnie's? She, she online? I was over at Donnie's house the other day. And she tried to get me. I saw her when she was making the move. I asked her for something to drink. And the minute I asked her for something to drink, I heard, watch her. <laughs> so I started watching her. She went in the pantry and pulled out this 2,500 pack. <laughs> Red cups. I said, I know. As soon as I said, I know, she turned right around because she already knew. It, it, it's, it's, it's something that I purpose in my heart. You, you can play it however you want to play it, and you can think however you want to think. But because I purpose mm, a higher mindset, I ain't drinking out your, your red cup. It's, it's, it's too, it's too, it's too, it's too, it's too, it's too, get, get out of me. I was going to say beneath me. <laughs> Let each one of us purpose in our heart. So when he called late in the midnight hour, what you doing? You already know what he want. You got a purpose in your heart. You can't purpose in your heart the night he called. You got, you got to start putting this in on you now because watch this. You can't just get this without having it first. Now, Jesus went a step further with this thing. Jesus said, He that has, much more will be given to him. He didn't mention your pocket. He never mentioned your bank account. He never mentioned the condition of your body. He never mentioned the condition of your thinking. He said, he that has, much more shall be given to that one. So wait a minute, you mean when I purpose in my heart, the day I purpose in my heart and I practice it enough, I have it long before I get it and then much more will be added? Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yes sir. Yes, sir. But here's the back side of that prophetess, prophetess Sharon. Here's the back side of that. He who has not, even that which he has shall be taken away. There's no reason. There's, listen to me, that explains why you can't get ahead because you didn't have it and even the stuff you have is being taken away from you because as a kingdom citizen, you didn't stick with having it. Now, if this ain't tied in to as it is, as he is. Pastor Wayne, you been? Give me a drink. It's right here? Wait, 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 I just asked for something that was right here before me. You looking for stuff you already have in front of you. And you're looking around for it 
when there's already... Turn to your neighbor and say, you, 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 you just better have it. Tell them, have it. Have a blessed relationship. Have it. Have a sound home. Have it. Nobody asks you what's going on in it. Just have it. Dale, that's you? What the heck you doing in here today? How are you here today and your son goes to heaven last night? You got to have something to be going on in the midst of your son dying last night. If she didn't have it before this nefarious situation happened, she would be a wreck. But because she had it long before it happened, You'll never get, you'll never get it at the rate you are going because you're expecting for things to change first around you. Stretch your hand towards her. Have peace in abundance. And he who has, Dale, much more peace will be given to them. We release the peace of God in your direction to your household, to your family members. In Jesus' name. Now, RIP. RIP is not for the people who pass. Y'all put R.I.P. on stuff with people who pass. And sometimes it's totally wasted because they went to hell. And that R.I.P. ain't going to make a bit of difference. It's amazing to me. I was talking to somebody. Why at funerals, everybody, like everybody go to heaven. Everybody? And the Bible says that the bowels of hell are enlarging daily? Brother so-and-so is looking down on us right now. When is somebody going to come up and say, he's looking up at us right now. It ain't going to change the condition by you saying he's looking down. What is that, to comfort the family? That he's looking down? And as a matter of fact, if you're in heaven, you ain't looking down nowhere. If you knew your Bible, they don't even know what you're doing. How in the heck your family members going to enjoy heaven while watching you go through misery in earth? We got to get a whole lot of things straight. Like they gain their wings. Ain't nobody getting no dog on wings. Angels have wings. Did you ever see Jesus with wings? No, the Bible says he just took off. I'll fly away without wings. He gained his wings. Nobody, see, that goes to show, that goes to allow me to know what you have and what you don't have. And that's why you need to be in the teaching ministry and stop despising somebody who's trying to help you. Come on, come on, now. Come on, Pastor. Great cloud of witnesses looking down. 
You know, great cloud of witnesses looking nowhere. There's a great cloud of witnesses, but they testify of all of the things that they know were to be true, and those are the witnesses that have gone before. They can witness. They have witnessed. They, they, ain't nobody looking down there. Mama looking on us right now. I know they can see it. Mama, mama ain't thinking about you. Mama, my mama and your mama ain't thinking about you. You mean my mama don't see what I'm doing? Pastor Wayne, go ahead. <laughs> Mama, you know I love you. Nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Nah. Hey, hey, but you know something, Pastor Mike? Apostle, you can tell when somebody have it or understand it. Ooh, yes. Because they will practice what they purpose in their heart in, in front of their problems. Yes. You know, they, they will continue to practice. They continue to practice what they purpose right in the face of their problems. You know, some people, they act like they have it, they fake like they have it, but when the problem comes, now they, they, they thrown off. And you gotta make sure you have this stuff. You gotta, you gotta have it in your heart so much that, that you cannot be consumed with what's in your head and what's going on around you. And I've seen a lot of times people are so consumed of the not enough in their hand is keeping them from seeing the purpose that God has already placed on the inside of them. That's why people can walk around looking for your glasses and they're on top of your head. I mean, I remember one time I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a guy on the phone looking for my phone. Like, I'm telling him, man, I'm trying to find my, where's my phone? I got my phone, I'm talking to the person. I was so consumed with other stuff and didn't know I had other stuff in my mind. And I'm talking on my phone. How many people got the, got the promises of God up against their ear, but they so consumed with their problems, they so jacked up. And that's why you got to come in here and sit yourself down and be ready to hear the word of the living God because that's the only thing that's going to make us like him. And if we don't look into the perfect law of liberty, you and I will never become like him. And God designed it that if we continue to walk in this perfect love of liberty, when we come out, Lottie Dottie and everybody going to look like this one man, and that one man's name is Jesus. You're consumed by looking at what's in your hand more than standing in what you know you have in your heart. <laughs> Last doctor's appointment I went to, it was a new doctor too. I thought I'd get a new start because the old guy just, uh, well, the former guy, he wasn't old at all. The former guy kept just going through the same stuff. He wasn't introducing anything new. So I said, let me go check with somebody else, see what they say. I go check with this new guy, and he said, uh, sir, this is a, a very challenging situation we have, have, we have here. Why the heck you think I'm here? <laughs> Is that the best you have? And I could have stayed with the other guy. And he's looking at me like, I, I don't even know how you doing what you doing right now. I have. It's what I have that I'm ignoring what I don't have as it relates to these things. Because these things are tricking a whole lot of y'all. You going by these things instead of this thing. And this thing is tricking you from and talking you out of this thing. Because when you get it here, ooh, you got it forever. As far as your money, your honey, what, whatever it is, you name it, your soundness of mind. It, that's why I am not going with all that stuff like, 
like Pastor Wayne, got his dog on the phone in his hand looking for it. And you know what some people conclude? Well, you know, we're getting up of up, up that age now. Y'all, y'all are, not me. Y'all are. If that's what you want to go with, even if that was so, I'm not accepting it here. Because what's in here can push out all of those things that are normal. Because when Moses, the Bible said that he was not, them people left Israel, the Bible said there was not a feeble one among, a feeble one among them. Moses won 20 years old, eyes not dim. Okay, well, that's a little bit too far down the road for you, I guess. Let's just stay here then. As he is, so am I. I purpose that in my heart. So, ooh, and you know what this is doing to me, Martin? It's distancing me from even a whole lot of other believers, my colleagues. And the worst part about it, as it's distancing me, I'm seeing that I'm persecuted by them even more. Because who does he think he is? And it gets almost to the point that some of them wish something bad would happen so we can normalize this cat. So we can make him regular. We can get him, and, and you haven't received the whole idea of your already being regular as it relates to kingdom status. When that man got so emotional this morning, I asked the Lord, how, how you want me to help? And I heard he just needed a little room, just a little room. And I, I beckoned his wife. I said, uh, hey, do you have a mortgage? And she said, yes, sir. I said, well, I don't, I don't know what your mortgage is, but... Uh, we're going to take care of the next three months. Okay, okay, okay. As I was making way to the, my car, they met me out front like, you, you, you don't, you, you don't even know. Now, now, they, they, they got a look. I mean, by the looks of things, the look of things, you, you wouldn't offer to do anything. And, and some of you trying to look the part more than being the part first. That's right. That's right. Let me just talk to you, man. I got your best interest in, in, in my heart. Nobody against you. I ain't going to come in here and plead with you like this and have something against you. I mean, listen, I want you to get this because the more you win, the more the kingdom can be demonstrated. I dare you to shout, we win. We win. And then I'm standing there and I just can't help myself because when stuff gets in your heart, Tony, it just started coming out. And so about four months ago, I, this thing just jumped on me. Four months ago, I started thinking about Sharon Foster and, and Jerry. What's Jerry's last name? Mitchell. Mitchell. I started thinking about Jerry Mitchell. About four months ago. And I said, Lord, they, man, they, they've worked in this finance office all these years. And as far as I know, Every dime has been accounted for. You can't put every, every Christian in the finance department. 
Did you hear what I just said? Yes. You can't put every what? Christian. Why can't you put every Christian? Every Christian? Because they ain't purpose in their heart to be Christian. Christ life. I said, Lord, uh, we all are getting to the place where we have to consider, you know, where we're going to put things and how we need to arrange things. And I said, Lord, uh, I would like to pay off both of their houses. No, no, no. See, y'all... Y'all keep playing with me and keep playing with this stuff and, and watch and see how this thing keep moving with or without you because the kingdom going to do what it's going to do whether you participate or not. I'm trying to give you a jump in this thing. And, and if, you, if you despise what I'm trying to do for you, then just go on and hate because you just, you just being used of Satan. That's dumb. No, I ain't calling no name. I didn't say you are Satan because Satan ain't, ain't, ain't in here and you ain't Satan. But he sure knows how to manipulate Christians, especially the ones who don't have anything in their heart. I got that thing in my heart so much, reading, and I couldn't contain it. And I just turned and told him. I had to tell him. Y'all don't know this, but I've been trying to Scheme and plot ways to how to pay off your mortgages. Jerry was like, ah, Jesus, whoa, whoa, use them, Lord, use them. I told, I told both of them, I said, I don't know when the manifestation of this thing coming out of my heart, so don't you stop paying your mortgage right now. I'm a good pastor. Actually, actually, we was on a meeting, and I got to get permission. One of my daughters here, well, this daughter here, is, is um, one of the board members that represents all of you all. So you know I'm going to listen to her. Okay, now watch this. She brought something in. I don't know if she want to be on camera like that. <laughs> Do you mind, Nikita? And, and, and there's a boss in her own right. Oh, yeah. Very much. She, she just, she just, uh, I ain't talking about you this, uh, uh, today, that's too much of my lesson. But tell them what you just did with that, that speaking they get for Women's Month. Uh, I hosted the uh, Alexandria Chamber. She hosted the Alexandria Chamber? Yes, the Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce. And your Annual Women's Leadership Conference. She hosted it. The, the Chamber of Commerce. Commerce. <laughs> Commerce. That's, that's ball status, and she's upstanding and sharing with them, and she's on our board. Hang with those. Some of the, the friends you are with are superfluous. Some of your friends are unnecessary. And you, you just, y'all just happy all together? Because they ain't purpose nothing in their heart. You ain't purpose nothing in your heart. What are we going to do? Whatever. You're going to do whatever when you ain't got nothing purpose in your heart. She'll tell you, we were talking about some things in our last meeting, and that thing shifted on me. And the board members, Pastor John, another one of them. Let me point them out to you. We all begin to weep. Oh, my word, the thing trying to jump on me again in our meeting. And they begin to just share with me like, Pastor, you've made such a remarkable difference in my life. And I'm like, what? 
What is this? How do we get over here? Stop it! When is anyone going to start singing to you? You touch me. Oh, you've touched me. When, when are people going to be able to say and sing to you ever that you've made this substantial difference in their life to the degree they realize that their life wouldn't be where it is today without your deposit? Like sometimes we feel like another, sometimes we don't. We jump in, then we jump out. We work this principle for a while, then we jump out of it. This should be this cyclic, cyclic, cyclic. So, <laughs> she's so right, I can't stand her. <laughs> Go to Galatians. Pastor Wayne, jump in there. How much time I got? Ooh, I got a little time on the clock. Will y'all give me a little more time? Yes, sir. I was going to take it anyway. <laughs> DD ain't home either. <laughs> ain't nobody at the crib. Turn to your neighbor and say, uh-oh. <laughs> I got seven more days to go. I, 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 I got to confess to something. Last night, I needed drugs. I took me some drugs last night. I couldn't risk it. I knew, <laughs> I knew it, it was... I needed some resting. <laughs> For the last three nights, we spent the nights together on FaceTime. Oh. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> baby, don't hang up. Don't, baby, don't hang up. Don't hit the button. Just go to sleep. <laughs> last night, she was flying through the night. On the way to Nairobi. And, and I, I found me some PMs. <laughs> what, what that mean? What, what does that mean? I threw them back. Wait, y'all threw them things back. <laughs> God feeling good and strong. But then I woke up about five. Barely I woke up about five. And I knew she would be landing about 4 a.m. in Paris. Well, I got on that phone five o'clock this morning. <laughs> Baby, you that? Yeah, hi, what are you doing up? Daydreaming and I'm thinking of you. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. No, I got that purpose in my heart. I, I, I don't know how you men are a part of Mike Freeman's ministry and you don't feel the same way about your wife. <laughs> Boy, you just got married yesterday. <laughs> how, how long have you been married? How long have you been married, Elder Leo? A year next month. <laughs> He was ashamed, too ashamed to say 11 months. <laughs> Talk to me in about 20 years. Because it's been 40 years for us next month. 40. Pastor Wayne, say 40. I don't know how your wife don't have access to your code on your phone. I don't know how she just can't walk off with your phone without you tripping. How is that? I don't know how she don't know how much money you got in your pocket presently and how much money you got in your bank. I mean, Didi asked me, how much, Mike, you got any money? And I said, yeah, I got some. She's like, how much you have? I'm like, dang, let me have what I have. You got all the rest of it. <laughs> she said, babe, let me just see what you have. I pull it out. She said, that's all you got? Here, boy, you need some more money. See, some of y'all men can't stick it because you're a man. I don't know 
how your wife got to ask you what time you coming home or if you coming. See, you ain't purpose this in your heart. You, 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 you plan with this thing. And all the ladies said, Amen. Say it one more time. Amen. From B more to B wine, say it one more time. I ain't been as good as I am today as a husband. Because I realized I never purposed a good husband in my heart. I realized I, years went by, and I never purposed being a good husband in my heart. What was it? I'm just saying they call me husband. Now I wear a shirt. I'm Dee Dee's husband. Because I purpose in my heart. I want to be the best husband among all husbands. I purpose in my heart. I, I, let me tell you something. That Psalms 1 and 1 or 1 and 3, he maketh me lie down. Ask Didi. She, Mike maketh me to lie down. I'll spare the rest of the details. But a young prophet told me, young girl that's just starting in the prophet, she told me she got a glimpse of heaven. She said, that grass, I saw it in heaven, it's a green you can't even explain. And it's about three, two to three feet high. And I, I can see why it'll make you lie down. You see grass like that, you just want to. Yes. You, you treat your wife like that. Every time she see you, <laughs> You'll make her lie down. You'll make her fix your meal without even asking. Amen. You, you, you purpose it in your heart and see what happens. You still worrying about what she going to do. Ain't nobody studying what Dee Dee going to do. What Dee Dee do ain't none of my doggone business. If you would do this, then I, when are you going to grow up? And focus on what you need to purpose in your heart. And the minute you do that, you're going to make her lie down. This stuff is so good to me, boy. Amen. Go to Galatians. Uh, Pastor Wayne, while we're going to Galatians, jump in there. Uh, it, it, you know, it's something because most, if you don't watch it, most are so focused on the outside that they're missing what's on the inside that God has already determined for you to have in life. And I believe with all my heart that these last two lessons are designed to grab you and to cause you and I to look in. Yeah. Because there's so many, you living life from the outside in instead of living life from the inside out. And the wild thing about it, God is really not looking at what's in your hand. God's not looking at what's around in your life. God is looking at what's in your heart. And the devil don't want us to look in because if we look in and start purposing our heart, then that's what the Holy Spirit of the living God could work with to bring the past. But if you're so outside focused, and I'm telling you, you got to make sure you lean in. Because even Pastor Jeff said on this morning, there are a lot of people listen to some unnecessary things at this particular time. And you need to be listening to the necessary things that's going to cause increase in promotion in your life. So I need you to give me you for this season. What I mean by you giving me you is that give yourselves to the word in this season. Because this is a season of preparation that's going to help define your purpose so you can have days of playing in pleasure because some of us been having
too many seasons of just plain and pleasure. And you don't want to get to the end of your life and realize, man, wait a minute. I've been playing the Lord too much. Because I hope you remember this. Seasons are periods of time in time. What did I just say? Aren't you glad that some seasons don't last always? Yes. They're just periods in time. They're not time in its totality. They're seasons or periods of time in time. So this period or season of time, Ecclesiastes, Sol Solomon tried to, 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 to acquaint us with, he says in chapter 3, verse 1, our brother Hotel, he says there's a, a purpose, there's a time and purpose, a season for, what, what, read it later, three and one. But he mentioned times and seasons. So you know there's a difference between, like we got winter, spring, summer, and all in time, right? But winter doesn't take up all the time of time. Winter just takes up a period of time in time. So I'm saying dedicate yourselves or give yourselves this period of time of preparation so that we can define purpose and then we can have pleasure and play later on. Push that neighbor around you in front of you and say, stop playing in this season. Stop playing in this season. This season of, of getting things, you know, prioritized. Because Galatians chapter number 6, verse number 9, I think it says, don't become weary while doing good this season, for in due season. Oh, so there's another season other than winter, spring, summer, and fall. There's a due season. Yeah. Woo! And you won't be due until you do. Okay. Isn't that right? I think you said that, Elder Donna, right? So I need you to put this season on. Uh, King Yana, come in. Oh, okay, because you, yeah. Yeah, put that on. Oh, little, little big. Put that on. Now, there, there should be something in one of the pockets. <clears throat> or oh, check the pockets of the other one. Check the inside pocket. <clears throat> Dr. Dee Dee's watching. Dee Dee! Hey, Dee Dee! If y'all don't go. Put that on. Now, now give me one of the moves. Who, who is he? Why'd you go right to Michael Jackson? He put that on, and the minute he put it on, he was identified as something else and someone else and even caused him to get in the character. Y'all, 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 y'all. 
Y'all, y'all. And, and, man, throughout the scripture, it tells you to put on something and take off something. <laughs> Woo! I'm a shot all by myself. I dare you to rear your head back and give him a three second praise break. Why are you wiggling your fingers like that? You got any mic moves? Okay, okay, all right, 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 all right. I am not trying to go viral. <laughs> Take the glove off. Bring the glove to me. Lay it up there. That glove ain't going to ever get up on his own. until this glove is put on a hand, it's going to be lifeless. It ain't going to have any movement. But the minute you put something in it, that's the only way it's going to move. Now, depending on what's in there, it, it's going to determine where it goes, how it moves, whether it's going to be used for righteousness or unrighteousness. So when you stepped out of unrighteousness, the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And it's no longer I, the glove. But see, the glove wants to be seen so much. That's why I asked them to give me this glittery glove because too many believers, mm, want to be seen. They, they want the attention to be on them and not on mm, the hand in the glove. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's not about you. It's about him. Come in, come in, Kenya. Come in, come in, Kenya. The, the, the strength that he feels right now ain't coming from the glove. but it's coming from the hand that's in the glove. Oh, man. The strength mm, you about to feel mm, ain't coming from you. It's coming from the hand that's in the glove. Oh, I wish I had somebody who could hear what I'm saying to you. When this hand gets on you, it ain't just the glove that's on you, but it's the hand. Shout, I got this. Shout, I understand this. Shout, I purpose this in my heart right now in the name of Jesus. Now give him a shout. Let's go home. But what you going with? That your wife you standing by? Grab her by the hand. How long you been married? Five years. That's when it seemingly gets the worst. Okay, I'm not saying that's your case. He said, no, sir. And I'm glad you shook your head. And, and don't ever help anyone who's speaking to you. If, if you know me, if anybody starts speaking to any of you or from the prophetic, don't help them. 
don't, don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. Stand there like this man or woman has lost their mind. Let me, let, let me tell you something. I don't care how good or how bad it is. You get this lesson in your heart. You, what's your name, sir? Charles? Charles, you, Prince Charles, or King Charles. Now. You get this in your heart? What, what's your name? John East. That John East will be able to leave. Hey, 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 if you're going to leave, just go and leave. Don't shake everybody's hand on the way out. You, you, you acting like the glove without anything in it. I ain't playing with y'all. Y'all, you, if you got to leave, leave. Why are you going to be shaking people's hand? Go on. And if you can't handle me, I ask you to go to another church in January. Because I got work to do. Ain't nobody got time to be playing these church games, man. We play too much. We shaking hands on them. The man walk out. Because not only are you missing out on something, you're distracting somebody else now. And I'm caring for people. And you're going to look at me like, he ain't got to talk to nobody like that. If you're killing yourself, how do you expect for me to talk to you? You drinking poison, you want me to say, you need to stop drinking poison in my Michael Jackson voice. <laughs> I'm for you, sir. I'm for you, ma'am. Y'all been married five years? You partners of this ministry? Oh, I'm so for you. Because if you can take that blessed relationship out of this place and go show it to the world, they're going to want to know because every marriage at five years, I promise you, you are exceptional. Remain exceptional. Take this lesson. You purpose in your heart to be the best wife that's ever known next to Dr. Dee Dee because you ain't anybody going to be her out there. And then I found out she's watching too. What else you want me to say? <laughs> this may not be your season for breakthrough. You can't sing that right now. This is your season for preparing. Breakthrough will come. But let me tell you something. Once you get so saturated in these seasons, one is going to overtake the other. See, because you're looking for breakthrough and you haven't done anything to generate it. Oh, God, you're the God of the breakthrough. Yes, he is. But he's a God of law in order. I just want you to know, man. I, I, I want you to know because, oh my God, if, if he can do this for me, Jose, he can do it for you. By the, matter of fact, there's a, there's a kidney donor that we have among us. Is she here? Come here, come here for a minute. You can bring your husband too. She came to me last week and said, uh, Pastor, I'm, I'm a kidney donor. I gave my kidney. Give me a microphone. What's your name? Beverly. Beverly, I know Beverly. And, and, and your name? Anthony. Anthony, I know A.B., A. Anthony, and, and Beverly Hawkins. I, I saw you on, on Facebook. Take, you were taking a picture with John Turk. You know John Turk? Yes, sir. Tell John Turk I love him, I miss him. I would love to see him. Yes, sir. Will do. Yeah, I, I'm on Facebook like a, like a, like a, like a hawk. I'm using Facebook to, to find, um, you know, see where, what y'all doing. 
so you post your business on Facebook. I ain't going to say anything to you unless it get real bad. But I'm not going to say it on Facebook. I'm going to come to you. You better keep your business off of Facebook. <laughs> Tell me about that. Okay, so it was... What year? 1999. 1999. It was before I joined this ministry. It was before you joined. Yes, yeah, so I was going to another ministry for a long time. Yeah. Um, and I felt that my place wasn't... I was kind of searching for another church to go to. Okay. But I wasn't actively looking. Okay. So there was a minister who joined this church. Um, he wasn't there for very long. Okay. And um, the church kind of grew to love him. He was like a son of the church. Yeah. And we saw his health start to deteriorate. Okay. And he just became sicker and sicker. He just looked, he just didn't look so at his best. He was a member here? No, at a, uh, another a member, church. Okay, another yes. church. Okay. So I just remember one night just going to the Lord and just saying, God, help him. You praying out on his, yes. and crying out on his behalf. Crying out on his behalf. I say, God, help him because if you don't help him, he is going to die. And God just told me plainly, Give him your kidney. And that was it. That was the end of the story. I did sob. I sobbed. I sobbed that night. And you sure you heard from God? I heard from God. Were you married then? I was married then. And what did Anthony say? Well, okay. I was out of the order of God. You were out of the order? Because the next day I went to church, and as church was ending, I went to the past and told him that I was his kidney donor. But I didn't seek my husband. I didn't, didn't talk, talk to my husband about it. Girl, I would have killed you. Yes, I didn't talk to my God, husband about look, it. I would have you. <laughs> so from there, the ball just kind of rolled. It what was, did you say, Anthony? Uh, pretty much, um, she came to me and she said, later on, she said, the Lord told me to get this man my kidney. I said, well, did he tell you to talk to me first? Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, you know, it, from there, it just continued on. She... She just kept saying the Lord said, so for a minute, I was a little selfish about it because I was like, well, what if I need a kidney? Who, who's there for me? But then I realized and God said to me, why be selfish if my wife can save this man's life? Then I'm all for it. Really? That's a big ask. But for me, it was easy. So, I, um, because you purposed it, it in your I, heart. I purposed it in my heart, and I wasn't fearful. Yeah, I knew it was God's will, and and this happened in 1999. 1999. So that's 25 years. ago? 25 years ago, and the thing about it, I was in when this happened. My husband was supporting us solely because I had just finished school. So a lot of people who were just finishing school, they were looking for you know, let's work and get our first paycheck. But I'm coming to him saying that, okay, I've been in school for two years, you've been supporting us, so now I'm gonna be out of work for, I can't work like everybody else who's graduating. Yeah, yeah. So it took about two months for me to go through this, but I'm telling you guys, it was a wonderful and marvelous thing. Once God had his hand in it, I got tested for everything under the sun. And then the person who I gave my kidney to, he had to be healthy enough to receive the kidney. So we did have so to delay So you didn't give it. it to the pastor? I did yeah. give it to him, but it took some time. Oh, so within a month, maybe a couple of months from the time I said, I'm going to give him my kidney, it probably was about two months. But he would have to have been healthy enough. He had to enough. have been healthy enough, and he, was, he wasn't... He wasn't know, healthy enough. He wasn't healthy enough at the, for, time. at the time. But then he... Got stronger. He got stronger. And boom, we can do this. Boom. So I want to say I said yes to God in, let's say, May, and I think in mid-July, it was finished. Oh, that was no time at all. So no time at all. But the thing is, I want people to know that follow God's follow, heart. Follow. Open See, you up your mind to God. you say what you won't, will, and will not do. That's right. But go to him with an open mind, an open heart, and watch God's miracle play out in your own life. Okay. Let him use Have you ever once regretted it? Never. There was nothing to regret. It was, it was a beautiful thing. And may I ask how your health is? It's wonderful. Relative to kidneys? It's, it's wonderful? Yeah. Now, what they told me before I... So you have two... I had two kidneys. Of course, everybody has two kidneys. But they told me... I got three. Once, they told me since I was going to donate, don't do dumps. I shouldn't say dumps up, but don't do high risk things. Don't be jumping from the airplanes. Don't do certain oh, things. You know, I see, don't. I see. You know, 
Yeah, so, to mess that kidney Right, up. so, you know, preserve the kidney that I have. But I've had no health problems what a at all. Seed to but say. I will say that at the time I gave my kidney, at the time I had to, it was like major surgery. So there was some recuperating time. But now, if you're a good candidate, they could just do it laparoscopically, like, laparoscopically. So it's like the recovery time is nothing now. Again, for me, it was six to eight weeks. So now wow. it's like nothing. It's just, you know, follow God's heart. A lot of people, especially our people, are dying every day because, you know, they're waiting hey, on the hey, kidney. Hey, Jose, not you. Yeah. Uh, but keep the faith. I mean, there's probably somebody sitting here in this ministry who can give you one at the drop of a hat. But again, follow the, the lead of the Holy heart Spirit. Of God you have to do it. what God has spoken. I commend you. Well, thank you what so much. What an amazing I thank you. offering and see the soul. Thank you so Woo. much. May you live long. Thank you. Live strong Thank you. without a single thing wrong Amen. in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Give it up for life. Anthony and Beverly, our Faith City partners. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Wow, what a ministry we have here, man. Um, Pastor Wayne, please take it from here. I'm, oh, what, what was I supposed to say? I was supposed to say something. Oh, big shout out to Fred and Rhonda in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. They, uh, they, uh, he just called, contacted me. He said, I like what I see in your marriage. I, I want that on my marriage. And I've never, never, no, never, I don't know that man. But I got on the phone with him last week. And we talked. And boy, I lit in the Fred. I lit in the Fred. Fred, it's all your fault. If you would just do what you're supposed to do, Fred. Yeah. Ain't no sense in having them. Y'all can comment and, and share, but we can make it off the air. Uh, Fred and Rhonda are their names. Um, and I was just elated to... Uh, no, I talked to Fred... I talked to Fred, it's Q here. When I talked to Fred, I talked to Fred Tuesday. And I told Fred, say, I said, Fred, I'm gonna call you Friday, see what you've done. Not only did I talk to Fred Tuesday, without even knowing Fred, I got on the phone and I said, hey, send Fred and Rhonda some roses for the new day in their relationship. So they got roses that day I talked to them, right? Fred been so fired up. Friday, I called him, he ain't answer the phone. I said, that no good rascal. No, I didn't say that. I stayed with it. But as I was sitting at my desk on last night, Fred's name popped up in my spirit. I said, I'm going to call him right now. I called Fred, and he said, you're not going to believe this. My wife and I were just talking. She's sitting right here. Man, the word you shared with me challenged me to change like never before. And, 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 uh, and his wife jumped on the phone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is you? How in the world? Oh, you're just such a great man. Oh, you just, how did you do? You're just so wonderful. Thank you for calling, Fred. Oh, Fred. Fred is, was about to be dead. I'm telling you, I was going to kill him. No, no, she is there. She is there. But you know what, you know, really kind of buried the hatchet with this thing? You know what the, what the nail was in the coffin? Watch this. And, and you got to say all oh, after I tell you. You got to say all. Oh, and you got to give me a good all. Oh. It was Fred's birthday. Oh. Y'all good class, boy. <laughs> Pastor Wayne, take it from here. And don't be long because we got to get out of here. <laughs> You know, it's amazing because surrendering lesson and then so are we in this earth realm. If you're ever going to get to the so are we, you got to submit to as he is. And that's what God is doing. And I want to give you an opportunity in here to start that process. It starts with you receiving Jesus, Lord and Savior of your life. If that's you in here on today, you saying, Dwayne, man, I want to surrender so I can submit so I can be like Christ in the earth. I want to be like that glove. I want to shine, but I want to know who's on the inside of me causing me to shine. So if that's you, 
I want you to raise your hand high. You saying, Dwayne, when you pray, pray with me at this location, at the other location. I want you to raise your hand high. I have three invitations. My second invitation is this. You're born of the Spirit. Yes, I see your hand. You can put your hand down now. My second invitation is this. You're born of the Spirit, but you need to be filled with the Spirit, with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues that the Spirit of God gives utterance. You saying, Dwayne, that's me. I'm, I'm born of the Spirit, but I'm not filled with the Spirit. There are going to come some times in your life when you don't know what to pray for as you are, but the Holy Ghost on the inside of you will allow you to be able to pray the perfect will of God because you feel with he, him, Holy Spirit. So if that's you, I want you to raise your hand. You're saying, Dwayne, that's me. When you pray, I want you to pray with me and I will receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And my third invitation is this. You're saying, I need a pastor. I need somebody that's going to watch over my soul. I need somebody that's going to minister the word and not only minister the word in simplicity, but I want them to model the word that they are ministering. We have a pastor here who would love to be your pastor. He would love you as God loves you. He would serve you the way God served you. And he would minister the word of God and live that same word in front of you because of his love for God in you. If that's you, you're saying, Dwayne, I need a pastor. I want you to raise your hand at this location, at the other location. You're saying, today is my day to connect with the teaching ministry of Pastor Mike Freeman here at FCC. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. Everyone stand at this time. Everyone stand at this time. And lastly, don't forget to share your takeaways because as our apostle always says, we're teaching you so that you can teach someone else. We can't wait to see you soon, and I pray that you have an amazing week.